Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. And as you can see today, I'm about to start my playthrough of Eldritch Horror. It's actually the very first time I'm playing Eldritch Horror on my channel. Even though I just voted it into my top 10 list in case of a zombie apocalypse. Because yeah, I think it's really the game I want to take with me in case zombies are taking over the world. <laughs> I know, stupid idea. But that's the way how I did my top 10 video. You guys actually voted for this game, though it was either Eldritch Horror or Vendake. Yes, two totally different kind of games. But I think the vast majority really voted for Eldritch Horror. I think it was two thirds versus one thirds. I'm pretty sure sooner or later we'll also do a playthrough or solo playthrough of Vendake. But yeah, today I'm about to start my solo playthrough of, not solo playthrough, my playthrough of Eldritch Horror. I have not yet fully decided on how many investigators I'm going to use. It will definitely be an even amount. I mean, that's the one I think problem with Eldritch Horror is the balancing um, in between odd and even amount of heroes or investigators that you're bringing on your journey. So typically, I would play a game like this with three investigators when playing this alone. Um, so I'm not really torn in between two and four. I think most of you would say go with four. It's definitely more easier that way because you really get, get more stuff done. But really handling four investigators um, on your own, on camera, is definitely a challenge. I know great guys like Cat Weasel out there, he's doing a tremendous job balancing these things. And even with his experience, uh, every now and then he makes a slight mistake. And Again, I'm, I'm no match to him. I mean, his experience, it's insane how often he played this and whatever Arkham Horror 2nd Edition on camera. So yeah, bear with me. Um, as I'm talking, I'm really thinking about going with two investigators, which mean I will most likely lose the scenario, but that's okay. I'm really okay losing against um, the great old ones in Eldritch Horror. But yeah, let's see how things go, shall we? Okay, and here we are. I have to, or for the most part, completed the setup of the game. As I already stated in my introductory video, I decided in the end to go with a two-player game, so two investigators in this case. And as I've never played this game on camera before, I also decided to go with a relatively basic great old one. In this case, it's good old Cthulhu. Eons ago, Cthulhu came from the stars with his star-spawn brethren. He now sleeps in the sunken city of Arlier, pretty sure I'm butchering this one, waiting for the stars to be right, to rise again. Actually, I have never played against Cthulhu too many times. I think because I kept getting the expansions relatively often and because I also introduced this game to a lot of folks, I really, I think the most challenge great old one in this game, for me at least, is Azatoth. So, and I think I played against Cthulhu maybe twice before. So I definitely wanted to explore him again to really see how things go. I'm pretty sure he's not easy to deal with, um, but it's a very classical kind of setup. So in this case, you still have to beat three mysteries and then we win the game. If he awakens, we can still flip to the other side. So in respect to playing speed, I think Adatoth is still the better deal because when he awakes, everything is over, as you know. Um, but also, I never won this game when a great old one actually awakened. I never did it. I mean, really, I, I've played this game, I don't know, 20, 25 times or so. I know there are folks out there who played way more than me, but I really played my fair share of this game. And I also won this game, and so not 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 impossible to beat, but uh, never when the great old one actually vacant. So that's why I doesn't really matter for me anyway. If those guys flip, then everything is typically over for me. In respect to our investigators, I also did that really randomly. We have Gloria Goldberg, the author. I'm not going through the backstory of the backside. This is really what Cat Weasel Paul is doing on his channel. He's really celebrating his games. I will definitely go through the reading for all those encounter cards and whatnot, and also when those um, great old one cards come up. And so I think these are definitely stuff I will read to you for sure, but really not every little detail here. But yeah. Definitely reach or check out um, Cat Weasel's channel if you really want a very, very immersive experience how to play, yeah, HP Lovecraft Thief 
theme games. Okay, here we have the author again. Her action allows her on a city space to gain one tom asset of your choice from the reserve or discard pile. This might come in handy. I actually haven't checked if there are any tom assets. No, they are not, but we may get there sooner or later. And then her second stuff thing is uh, you and other investigators on your space roll one additional die when resolving a test during an other world encounter. And this is really helpful. And these are really the things in a two player game which really helps you. Of course, it helps you also in a three or four player game, but I think really having this abilities here in a two player game really does help. On the other hand, they need to be together. And that's the downside of those abilities because typically you really have to send your investigators around the globe. Um, so it's not very likely that those two guys will meet relatively often. And really, again, that was done completely random. Uh, her starting belongings is this Mythos Codex. She has the Find Gate spell which, spell, which allows us to play with the top gate of the gate stack revealed. So yeah, let's have a look at that. So that will be the next gate. That's the heart of Africa. So um, yeah, we will know what is coming. Not sure if this will change anything whatsoever. But yeah, let's see about that. And then as for our second investigator, we have Tony Morgan, the bounty hunter. His action allows him to test influence and if he passes um, you may then spend up to two focus to gain one clue for each focus span. Really also a very very valuable experience. Here I was really extremely lucky actually with my pick and again yeah you know the stack of investigators that come with all the expansions and yeah I was really lucky. I didn't really choose at all. And yeah, when you defeat a monster during a combat encounter, we would gain one focus. So that's perfect synergy to his normal ability here. And he starts the game with those handcuffs. And before resolving the strength test during a combat encounter, you may spend one focus. Also makes sense here to defeat that monster if it has toughness to or less. And that's really a cool thing to have. Again, in respect to the expansions, I'm not too crazy. I did not add anything, uh, everything. So from the card, from the encounters, basically everything is in here for sure. And so, but I'm not using any sideboards or whatnot. It's also really a space constraint here down in my little basement studio. But the one thing I want to add are those prelude cards because yeah, I really like the the chaos <laughs> those cards come with. So I will basically take the topmost card from this deck. The only, again, um, limitation here, if this card calls for a sideboard or whatever, then I will redraw it because again, that's really the one thing I didn't prepare at this point in time. But apart from that, and maybe I should have done that during setup and maybe I have to go back because again, everything else I have done. So we have already a gate up there in London. I have spawned the clue and whatnot. So maybe I should have done that at a different time, but I think Ultimately, it doesn't matter too much. And here we have the ghost from the past. And here I'm not sure. No, I think it's not a sideboard one. You flip through the pages of the blood stained jewel. It is nothing you have not read 10 times over already. Furious, you throw it against the wall. Dad, gone, for what? To find answers to a question that should never have been asked. A question that even now you cannot expunge from your thoughts. Lost and alone, you make your way out of the coroner's office, a small box of the deceased's effects in hand. Okay, cool. I think I know this one. Before resolving step three of setup, choose. Okay, that's you should have done that earlier. I think we need to draw those cards earlier, but okay, I, I'm still okay. Draw one random investigator sheet exactly and return it to the game box. So it's out for good, but that's okay. During step four of setup, receive starting player the lead investigator against the starting possession. Lead investigator is Gloria Goldberg, by the way. Uh, noted on the investigator sheet that was returned to the game box. Okay, cool, yeah. Then he gains, or she gains in this case, a, hunted, a haunted condition and advances <laughs> doom by one. Isn't that lovely? But yeah, okay. I will take that. I think that's, I think they're really fun worse of those actually prelude cards but I think I will take that. So yeah let's simply take the topmost card from my stack here. I think I even put it away now. I have to really maybe I will simply I, I I see it now. I think we will make a cut here. Well basically here. Okay who do we have? Oh Sister Mary. I know and love her too. And her starting possession 
I think that's cool. Holy water asset, one ship ticket and one clue. Okay, that's really not a bad starting, additional starting possession. Okay, I take that. Okay, and here we have the holy water. You may discard this card to gain plus five, I think will, right? Um, and strength during a combat encounter. Very powerful. As an action, discard this card to choose an investigator on your space to gain a blast condition. Yeah, it's really cool. Ship ticket always comes in handy. And yeah, here we basically have that clue. I think that's really not a worse spot or bad spot to be at. The problem is I also get a haunted condition now. So let's have a look at this one here. That's a Bane. For whatever reason, I thought this would have been only a madness, but Bane, yeah, that's pretty bad. If you would gain a plus condition or improve will, you may discard this card instead. You may discard. So I even get to choose, right? Yeah, and then yeah, when this, um, I keep forgetting what it's called here, yeah, this effect comes up. Um, on a one, two, or three, would we'll flip this card. One, two, or three, that's also pretty bad. 50% chance. Hmm. Okay, let's see about this. I mean, I could gain the, I could get rid of it basically by doing this, and I would still gain something because I still have this one. The one thing, of course, that we are losing is time because we have to progress Doom by one. Hmm. That's a problem, but I'm really tempted now to actually, but that's my action then, I'm getting rid of that haunted condition. Hmm. Okay, I need to think about that. But of course, we are not done yet as we still have to look at our mystery card for Cthulhu, really risen. Okay, eons ago, the city of Relay was plunged to the bottom of the ocean by some forgotten disaster. Pretty sure Cthulhu remembers. It has remained trapped there, waiting for the right time to resurface. Now, that moment has finally arrived. When this card enters play, place the mystery token on space. We already did that because I have checked that one out already. As an encounter, an investigator on Space 3 may explore the island city of Relay by resolving a Relay's Risen special encounter. Okay. Uh, oh, at the end of the Mythos phase, if there are Eldritch tokens, ah, yeah, you gain those Eldritch tokens from this card. And we need half. So basically one. Okay, that's not impossible. I have forgotten to place that a token, actually. I have seen the card, but I think I was looking for the token and I think that's that one down there and in theory in theory Tony could make it there by grabbing himself a ship token and getting there and doing this early in the game when they are still fresh that may not be the worst thing and now I really was oh this would have been so cool actually to if he would have had a focus token for example or if he would have gotten that um, clue token Oh, this would have been amazing. On the other hand, I, again, as it's really quite some time that I played Cthulhu, I have no clue what these special encounters, they could really ask for clue tokens. I really have no clue. And maybe it's a mix of things that they're asking for. I believe they are similar to the other world encounters. So basically with um, introductory kind of tests and then depending if you passed or um, failed that test, you have two different kind of, or two-stage encounter, but I could be completely wrong. But he could make it there. And just to check it out, I'm really tempted to go there. Okay, that's really not, not a bad spot to be at too. And maybe just for making sure you're all aware of the board state, here we have our starting gate that's in London. And I have drawn a cultist and cultists are really not that big of a deal. The problem is we are losing sanity. And that's part of the Cthulhu card here, as you might remember when we are encountering them. But apart from that, they're really relatively easy to deal with. And the starting clue is also here. So in theory, Gloria could also make it up there. She now got the ship ticket to really get there. So also a very tempting thing actually, but on the other hand, she could make it to London and close that one because the next time the omen will advance, um, yeah, Doom will also advance by one. So making it there might also be a good idea and we can hold on to that ship token. Ah, but then we have to fight. I mean, she should be able to deal with that cult is there and she has a good amount of sanity. Oh boy, already decisions, decisions. Okay. But I will put this aside. Yeah, we only need one Eldritch token. Okay, interesting. 
And then I think we should be actually ready to start the game. Again, Gloria Goldberg is the lead investigator, so it's her or her action phase first. And now I'm really tempted to rather send her to, because again, it's not getting any more easier than beating a cultist, actually. This could have been something very terrible, a deep one or whatever that we would end. She's not the fighter, obviously, but she could make it. And in theory, she should go for a focus action first, actually. But I really think having some gate control and I have none of those cool gate standees that Cat Weasel is using. I really need to, to <laughs> pimp my copy of Eldritch Horror away more, obviously. So maybe first action getting that thing. On the other hand, I could get rid of this one here. The haunted condition relatively soon now with my first action going for this. Discard this card to gain on your space. That's her too, to gain... Um, a blessed condition and if you would gain a blessed condition i can get rid of it and yeah pretty much deal with the haunted condition and that would offset most of my penalty again i still gain the ship ticket and a clue token from that prelude card ah, but having the focus for the gate is also important no, let's hold on to that haunted condition for now. We can still do that. I think for my first action or for first action, I want to give her a focus token. Having focus, never a bad thing. And then with her second action, she will simply move to London. And yeah, we'll have to fight the cultist. And if you remember, if she's able to beat the cultist, she can directly go to the gate or whatever, do something else in London. But in this case, our plan was to close that gate. Okay, let's take that. And then it's Tony. And I don't think I really need to explain the heck out of this game. So you should, most of you should be aware of what this game is, but some of the mechanics I might explain. And I will definitely play something wrong. So let me, please let me know if I miss something. And I will do a rather short um, introductory episode today, maybe only two turns or so, just to give you some, some room to maybe give, send me your advice, what I should be doing next and catch some of my errors or goofs. I'm pretty sure I will make a ton of those. And I think I will stick to my original gut feeling. I will, for his first action, he will go for a ship ticket. Um, and then he will basically spend that sh ship ticket right away to move one, two spaces. Here's so a one for his normal movement. And then if you are on a ship line, you can then spend that ship token to um, basically move a second time. And I think that's what I'm going to do. And yeah, he will be here again. Problem is, we really don't know. I have no clue what expects me down there, but it's so awfully tempting now trying that. And I'm pretty sure this was a terrible mistake, but I'm curious. And if it's a short playthrough, then it is <laughs> what it is. Again, it's me the first time playing Eldritch Horror on camera here. And yeah, maybe I will come back to it relatively soon, actually, if I enjoy it. And I really do like and like this game. And if it makes sense for me playing this here on camera, and I really now should start talking and go into the encounter phase. Gloria is still the lead investigator, so she starts her encounter phase because she's on a space with at least one monster. She has to engage that monster accordingly. And again, we can check out the basically the printed section, the cultist section of Cthulhu. And before resolving the strength test, there is no uh, horror check in this case. So we can basically skip that. Um, but now we are moving into that. But before we are doing this, she has to lose one sanity. And I believe there are several ways to do that. I typically play it like this. So if I gain a wound or if I would lose, I will adding this here because for me, I don't know why I'm doing this and maybe it's the right way to do. I really lost track, but that's how we typically play this game. If we're getting a wound, we're adding this up to eight in this case. So that's her sanity. And then, yeah, we have to fight the problem is, and this is, I think, oh, maybe I really should have paid more attention. Yeah, I only have one strength. That's really a bummer, but I have two rerolls in theory. I think that was my, again, we only need one wound, right? We need one success. Yeah, let's let's do it anyway. It's, it's really too tempting. I really should have checked her stats, which I didn't. But okay, she's only, I, for whatever reason, I thought they're rolling two of those. 
but that's what it is. So we are rolling basically one die. We are looking for a five or a six, as you are aware. And wow, okay, that's a good start. That's really a good start. So again, this guy only has one, I think, um, toughness as well. Up here, uh, we only have to beat one success in order not to take a wound. So we have taken care of this cultist. And I know there are some complaints, especially by the lonesome gamer who doesn't like Eldritch Horror too much um, because you're not getting any rewards for those guys. But yeah, that's it. That's really this Arkham Horror experience. Arkham Second Edition, where you really keep those for trophies. And I like that. I see that why it's intriguing, but yeah, it is what it is. So you really are doing damage control more than anything. And then because there are no other monsters on my space, I can go for another encounter and I get to choose if I want to get sucked into the gate or if I want to yeah, encounter London. And I think right now, let's and the idea after all was to go for that gate encounter. So yeah, let's draw our first gate card or other world encounter card. When I'm playing this with an actual human player, then we are reading these cards to us without revealing or giving away too much of the results. In this case, I'm all by myself, but I at least cover those and I really didn't look. Um, and I don't, by far, don't know all of those cards, obviously. I'm not sure how many of those City of the Great Race cards, Great Race cards are in this deck, but yeah. I think you understand my problem here or my dilemma. On a high stone shelf, you find books containing the wisdom of both the distant past and the far-flung future. Unfortunately, the tomes were written using a series of strange curvy linear symbols. You do your best to translate the alien language. Okay, wisdom minus one or law minus one. That's two dice for her. Not particularly great. But we have to look at that and we still have our focus. I mean, that's still a good deal, right? And awesome, 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 awesome. Six. Okay, so we get to read up here or down there. You decipher the means to return yourself to your own time. Close this gate. I take that for sure. Amazing, amazing stuff. But we are not done yet, as you know. After you return, you forget your time with the great race, but are plagued by strange dreams. Okay, we have to do a will check, which is three dice for her. So let's see about that. Will, yeah, it's three dice. There are no minuses. No, I don't think so. Perfect, 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 perfect. Great job, Gloria. Perfect turn. You are really a star. If you pass, you explore these visions during your sleep. Gain one clue. Nothing bad would have happened even. Are you kidding me? Cool stuff. Here is our clue. Wow, she's already at two clues. That's pretty something actually. Okay, that was an amazing first turn, Gloria. Awesome stuff. Okay, Tony, the pressure is on you. <laughs> It was really a great start. Where are those special encounters? Uh, okay, yeah, as I said, that's I already saw that. Um, we basically need another card up here. I need to do some zooming and scrolling. And again, I have no clue what awaits me here. Hundreds of deep ones surface from the water that can't be good, crawling up the green stones. You hide yourself and watch the priest perform a strange ritual. Observation minus one. Okay, he has an observation of four, which means he's going to roll three dice. I take that. Problem is he doesn't have any re-rolls whatsoever. I'm really having this one focus token really so often makes this huge difference, but I have to live with that. So let's roll those dice. And yeah, let's simply hope for the best. And you can do that. I believed in you. Perfect job. Let's see what awaits. Okay, this can't be good. I mean, I, I see this law check here. This, this must be brutal. Although you cannot understand the words, the ritual reminds you of a similar ceremony performed by human cults. Law minus one. Okay, mm, in theory, he had a law value of two. I was really thinking about a one, but yeah, as he's losing one die, I am pretty sure this can't, this can't be good, no. And I promise you, I stopped reading. I have no clue what will happen here. You can do your reading, but I have no clue. We are rolling one die and oh, so close. I saw a six for whatever reason. I saw a six and again. There are no re-rolls, right? No, they're not. Maybe I should really have played it slow. Okay. If you fail, you misinterpret the chant, resolve the fail effect. Okay, okay, okay. What's the fail effect? That's down there. A loud croak. 
informs you that one of the deep worms has spotted you. The monstrous fish creatures descend upon you from all sides. <laughs> Lose three. Three health. Oh yeah, and this, I see that now. This would have been, uh, sorry, I spotted that. Yeah, this would have been the Eldritch token. So it's not impossible. I think that's good to know. But really now having this one re-roll really might have changed something. But yeah, I'm taking three hits now. Or rather, Tony does actually, but he's a pretty fit guy. But yeah, three is definitely not a good start. Yeah, this was our very first Relay Risen card. Um, amazing job. I mean, he passed the first one, but then yeah, not so much on the second one. Though those things are really tough to beat. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's something I... <laughs> It can't be that easy, but for whatever reason, I felt cocky enough. But that was pretty much our encounter phase. So we're moving into the first mythos phase of the game. So let's see what we get here. Yeah, of course, it's the first rumor. I mean, I think there's a 50-50 chance that we are getting a rumor, um, depending or based on the way how you are building the mythos deck here. So I'm really not too surprised here. But what do we have? Web between worlds. A sect of Atlak Naha worshippers have called forth the nightmarish spider. Mm -hmm. So, okay, we are definitely spawning a clue. I think that's at least something. And um, the underworld, no, I think I have all those tokens in here. And that's space 15. Okay, 15 is down here in South Africa somewhere. I will place that off camera. And then, yeah, let's see. Earth 3 Eldritch token, basically. Ongoing rumor. When this card enters play, spawn, yeah, the spinner of Webb's epic monster on space 9. Yeah, great. Great epic monster. That's exactly what we needed in turn one. When it is defeated, we will solve this rumor. And when there are no... Okay. Investigators lose the game. You must be kidding me. Of course, it's a card with tentacles. Of course. Of course. I don't know. There are 50 of those <laughs> rumor cards or so. They're not so that many, but really a lot. And I got... I had <laughs> really one of the worst. Okay. And yeah, basically every time we hit this trigger here, this card one average token from this card. Okay. Otherwise, unless investigators as a group spend clues half okay that's not too bad i mean gloria can deal with that that's that's at least something but it's still bad so yeah let's find the spinner of epic of webs um epic monster and this monster goes up here looks pretty terrifying already so let's see what it does toughness is equal to investigators plus two that's four okay that's beatable actually two and two but strength test minus two that's brutal but in theory with the holy water we could get rid of it with the holy water and focus token and whatnot we could really try to get rid of it four is not impossible yeah, no, it's a plus five actually only. But again, if you fail the will test or the horror check, do not resolve. Okay, we have to pass. But that's also with a holy water, that's not a problem. But again, no, I think she's rolling six dice or four dice. So everyone, everything needs to be a success. So that's not gonna fly. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that, that doesn't work actually. Ah, that's a bummer. Um, And this holy water again would be the perfect card for Tony Morgan too. Hmm. Okay, yeah, we have to live with that. So we are placing this card somewhere up here. We are placing three Eldritch token on it. And again, anytime we are hitting this, ah, oh, come on, what's this? What's this effect? You must be kidding me. The reckoning, the reckoning effect, exactly. Um, we have to basically discard one uh, unless we are spending one, right? half to investigators as a group. Okay, that's at least something. So yeah, we have some time. So maybe Gloria can do something about that. But I think they're now in the wrong spot. I would really like to have Gloria down there with his um, really risen encounters and have him up there. Maybe it's now really time that these guys do meet actually to exchange some resources. Yeah, yeah, I think it's something worth considering. But at least that was our mythos phase so we are coming back to our next round actually okay let's see about that i think we keep the lead investigator on gloria question now is should we really rush into that i mean she would be i'm let's say relatively certain that she will maybe not take at least any physical wounds and maybe she will deal some wounds. That has a toughness only of two, four. It's really not impossible. Problem is when she's spending that holy water, it's gone. And then she maybe remain there for a second round of combat. And 
but what does it bring her then she's really out of luck if she needs a second weapon to go there of course she could go there do some damage and maybe ah but he's now really down there at the space oh boy that's so bad that's so bad what am i going to do maybe i need a preparation turn first right i think so I think so maybe I mean she has this mythos codex um, the unique asset with her so maybe as an action she could it's let's go for a preparation turn I think so so she will take the com so-called component action you muster the courage to uh, you muster you muster the courage to look upon the secrets of the universe okay we are going for a will check her will is a three though it's not impossible and again she has a focus token with her perfect okay that's something maybe i should have gone for a focus action first but and now i really was going for something else but that's perfect okay if you pass the pages contain knowledge your mind can hardly fathom okay now i'm not so sure this could be i really don't know all those cards here and for gloria i don't really know this could be something which says if you have two successes three successes and i'm pretty sure that's what it is actually because there are other unique assets which tell you you may flip flip this card and this typically tells you um rather wait and go for it again because you're adding them i don't know tokens to that card for example um but again okay, think in this case yeah we have to flip it so that's what it is um no 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 it seems we are okay we can choose for something flipping through the faded pages of the codex you begin to understand the horrifying truth about the ancient ones and their myriad spawn resolve one effect of your choice then this card this card no okay then okay we have two choices okay you may spend one sanity to gain one clue which is not the worst thing in the world actually because we need clues in order to do rumor control and unlike Arkham Horror we can have multiple rumors out there active at the same time and you may spend oh three clues to advance the act oh that's so cool no of course in this case we really want to wait we have two of those clues already so that's truly perfect that's so cool that's really cool I take that so yeah she's taking another sanity hit which brings her to two out of eight i'm okay with that and therefore she will gain one clue again it doesn't really matter which one it is and overall she's now at three clues and we are flipping this card back so we know what awaits us okay that's perfect and with three clues oh now i'm really tempted to move up there to get the clue with her second action and i think that's exactly what she's going to do so she will move up here with her second action to go for this research encounter and she still has her focus token with her so i guess that was really not too unfortunate okay i take that awesome and then we are down here again with tony and yeah, i think i want to leave him here actually at least for one more round so we are going for a focus action first and yeah, unfortunately i cannot take uh, action twice otherwise i really would go for two of his uh two focus tokens but i think we can still go for um, unfortunately it's a c space so we cannot go for an acquire asset action no we cannot but yeah maybe we simply rest them seems a bit wasteful actually ah, these handcuffs could be now but not against the epic monster no toughness is no, no, a different story now ah, we cannot go for this you may spend up to two clues to gain one clue for each focus ban okay we could do that now but no let's rather rest of course we cannot heal any of ours we don't have sanitech where we are basically losing out here but i think that's still a fair deal and yeah those were his two actions and if we don't use it then maybe for my next action uh he could really go for his um, bounty hunter special action which is very powerful gaining clues especially with his web between worlds epic monster up there i mean that's that's pretty cool but this was again already the action phase we are going into the encounter phase with gloria 
who is up there and I think the idea was to go with a research encounter that's really a cool piece about this game every great old one has its own little deck of encounters so they're all thematically fitting okay let's see what we see here we are the sea space so what do we have here cultists have taken the ship only one of them stands between you and the escape craft if you have a dark pack condition if you have a dark pack condition no no the man bows obediently are you kidding me offering his help gain this clue if you do not have a dark pack condition a cultist monster ambushes you are you really kidding me i mean you can only overcome this with a dark pact and even if we are beating that cultist we don't get this clue do i get this right yes it seems this way oh boy okay we know the drill um she has to take a sanity hit um so i will exchange her two with a three um out of eight which is still okay um she still has only one strength we are not using our holy water obviously so in theory we are hoping for a five or a six here oh, this is already going down and wow she is a star okay she's not taking any hits from that cult at least physical damage but again we are also not gaining anything if you do not have a dark pack condition a cultist monster ambushes you yeah it is what it is um yeah we have dealt with this card and it didn't go our way um yeah that's that's great that was an eventful turn for her yeah that's i was really hoping for that clue actually because then yeah that's bad um that was the encounter for gloria so again we are dealing with this really risen card at the very peak of the island you encounter a massive stone door featuring a horrific bas relief of a dragon-like creature strange symbols are carved along the edge of the door some of the icons resemble drawings you have seen in books and that's the lord has again a minus one one mm, ah he could have rolled two dice at least that's something <sighs> I think they all come with this lore, it seems, huh? But I'm not really sure if he's the best. I mean, she would roll one more die at least. But yeah, I mean, we have to live with it now. And again, I have never said I play this game well, only that I play this game. I like to play this game. So let's see, we are rolling one die now. And that's the one thing that's very fair about this game, Eldritch or even let's say if his lore would have been a one, he would still roll a die. That's not so in Arkham Horror 2nd Edition, you really have to come to the positives. And no, that's not good enough. But I think let's spend that focus. I mean, that was the idea all along to re-roll that. And that's a five. Okay, I take that. But now the focus is gone. If the next thing is also something similar, then yeah, I think we are in a bad shape. But at least he's doing okay in respect to those tests. At least the initial test. You spot a protective ward out of place, hanging precariously. A member of your crew is on top of the door frame next to the ward. You warn him to carefully replace it. And that's oh, an influence check. Again, minus one. His influence is a two. Okay, if you pass, yeah, we gain the Eldritch token. Ah, oh, that's uh, it's really not impossible. But, I mean, this could have been an observation or a strength. And we would have at least rolled two dice or three dice. And those fail effects, they're all bad. They're really all bad. Oh, come on, you can do it. <laughs> no one, of course, it's a one. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really bad. Okay, if you fail, uh, he fumbles it. Resolve the fail effect. Okay, <laughs> I think I spotted it already. Those cards are brutal. Somewhere on the other side of the enormous door, you hear a thunderous splashing sound and feel the ground shake. As something approaches the island surface, advanced doom by one isn't that lovely as we have already lost pretty much two steps here one from the prelude card and one through this game effect and we have not even seen a very bad uh, mythos cast that would advance the doom accordingly wow these cards are brutal but yeah they're really not impossible to beat actually but yeah, i mean he was now basically unlucky three times basically two times a law one he already got ridden of it then if the second test would have been observation or strength at least there would have been hope or maybe not a minus one but yeah these cards have to be somewhat brutal i get that to some extent 
But okay, we have to go through our next Mythos card. So let's see what this is. And okay, that's a normal, <laughs> a normal quote unquote yellow one. But stage one only consists of yellow and blue cards, by the way, at least for Cthulhu that is. Curse of Knowledge, that's a neutral one at least. No, I don't see any tentacles here. This dark intelligence somehow embedded its maliciousness in its own stories. Little by little, these stories have crept into your mind, poisoning you. Okay, we will go through these steps here first, which means the Omen will advance. We don't have any gates out, so we can ignore that one. If now we would have blue gates out for each open blue gate, um, then the Doom would advance accordingly, but that's okay. Next, yeah, cool, we are triggering our Reckonings as this is the next thing to do. And one of the um, expansions, I think they came with this additional card which tells you in which order you have to do those. And that's really something I appreciate. Um, and this order, monsters. I don't think we have any monsters out with reckoning effects. No, we don't. Then we are doing Ancient One and I believe there is nothing. Oh yeah, it is. Oh yeah, there is one. Of course, um, this one here. You can see that. Each investigator on a sea space. I believe they're both on a sea space. Yeah, hooray. That does not contain an Eldritch token, places an Eldritch token on their space. Okay, and then when you move on those exactly, you you basically oh become delayed and lose one sanity. Isn't that lovely? But okay, let's do that. But I guess right now that's not that big of a deal because yeah, we already have to move on to those. So again, we are not actively moving on those again anytime soon. And really up here, that's okay. I think we can live with that. Okay, that was the omen. Uh, the reckoning for the ancient one and then we are doing mythos cards yes we have that up there so in theory we could get rid of or we could simply discard one but if the last one goes yeah when there are no Elric token on this card investigators lose the game on the other hand we could also spend one of our clue tokens and as we i think we have to hope that she's getting that clue during her next round right that's the idea so so yeah, if we are losing now her one of her three, no, I think we are getting rid of one of those. I'm pretty sure that this is a terrible mistake, but that's also very brutal rumor card to have out as your very first card, actually. It really is, but I think I will keep it anyway. And then we are going through possessions and conditions. Let's start with Gloria. And right now I don't really know in which order to resolve those. So we will start with the haunted conditions. So on a one, two or three, we will flip this card and then something brutal will happen. Okay, and yeah, let's flip this card. Isn't that lovely? Okay, cool, that's, that. that's how I know and love my little Eldritch Horror. Each night the spirit returns wailing endlessly throughout the night. The sound of its shrill voice weakens you and deteriorates your health. Lose one health and impair. Okay, we cannot impair. And that's, that's at least something. We cannot impair strength any further. But yeah, we are losing one health because we simply can't sleep. But again, we cannot impair strength. At least I think we can't impair beyond a one. Can we still place that token there? That's the question. I really am not sure. And that, that's really something that where I need to check the rules now. And no, I think we should be good. An investigator cannot impair a skill if doing so reduce that skill's modified value below to one. But we cannot also not choose to impair a skill. So let's say there would be an effect that tells me we can choose one thing to impair, then we cannot assign this to one that's uh, to one that shows only one value. So in this case, at least. We are okay with that, but we can continue losing health. But that's not the end of the world, actually. So maybe that haunted condition for her is not so bad. Okay, but then we still have to deal with the find gate spell. We might lose it now. We have to test our lore and then flip the card. So we have to flip it no matter what. Let me, I think I have to whoop. Roll over a little bit and we're yeah, looking for some success. Okay, that was close to three successes actually. Mm, but okay, it's only one and I'm pretty sure one is better than zero. What happens here? Any other text for zero is much longer than the one. Your perception of reality is warping. Lose one sanity unless you discard this card. 
Yeah, I don't know. Um, knowing which gate comes out is nice, but it's really not game breaking. And she only has suffered three damage here. Oh, of course, with the two plus, you can reach much from the stars. Reveal each gate in the gate stack. So this could have been actually nice. On the other hand, is it really? Yeah, you can prep and whatnot, but is it really? No, we are getting rid of that spell. That's fine. She cannot take any more hits. Of course, she will rest, but again, um, even with resting, she would. Um, I, we really want to get rid of some of those wounds here, obviously. But I believe those were all of those effects. There are no more reckoning effects on Tony Morgan on her. So we can move into the next effect. And that's to spawn another gate. We know what it is, the heart of Africa. In theory, I should have flipped that, but yeah, I, I knew that this was coming. So I think we simply spawn it over here. We have to bring out one monster. And okay, I think we are again extremely lucky. That's another cultist. Like I really, I really shuffled those well. I'm not cheating in these games. And yeah, then we still have to deal with the event on that card, which says each investigator discards half of his clues. Okay, I really should have read that card, but that's what I'm not doing because then otherwise I would have... <sighs> I mean, this doesn't have any tentacles, but it's still a bad card. So I think in this case, I really allow myself a little bit of a mulligan here. Because, yeah, this is really something which you can read. Yeah, and this is where you really have to game the game a little bit. Um, so instead, uh, you do remember, I removed one of those tokens from that instead of um, discarding one clue. I give it back and will discard one clue, right, for that um, effect up there. So because this will bring her down to two and now we are each investigate half of his clues their clues i think that's now the proper thing to but it's it's a kind of older game but we know and yeah then she gains cursed so everything is falling apart she will lose half of her clues which is this and then i have to check for the curse condition and here it is i mean we all know the curse condition only sixes count and now I think the holy water just got more important for her um, getting rid of that um, curse of course again I was thinking about using this to do uh, getting rid of that but I know this effect here it's not the end of the world this haunted condition um, and this is cool with um, mansions of madness you are exchanging those cards so they also have this backside which nasty stuff will happen but as soon as it triggers you return it to the box or basically shuffle it back in or whatever discard it and draw a new card um, same effect but with a different um, stuff that happens on the backside also very enjoyable but again in this case it's also cool getting to know your spells over time because the scale of things is different here so you learn to live with your weaknesses and so on, which is how I thematically make sense of it. So you know how those spells work, what happens if they fail. This is, And it makes this game a little bit more planable after all. And I guess that's pretty much the end of the round. Really, the first turn was okay. The second turn was terrible. Truly, truly terrible. So yeah, we really have to improve significantly, of course um then let's call it for today but i really hope you enjoyed my first episode of eldritch horror here you already have seen i really not playing this game very well i that's basically me i used to take some risk which you have seen down here i'm pretty sure someone who plays this game more often than me would have said no let's wait let's prep him a little bit down there let's get this first one two clue token then move in i'm pretty sure this is what you should have done and i'm still can consider doing this the problem now is moving him out now and moving him back will resolve in a result in another loss of sanity for him so that's also not great so pretty sure it could have could have worked don't get me wrong, even the second time could have worked, but now I really have to reconsider things. And for her, it was really extremely unlucky up there. I mean, that she wasn't able to gain that clue, getting all those really, this, this is a gruesome card, a horrible rumor card of there. The second card was also bad, getting a curse pretty much on turn two of the game. Yeah, things are bad. <laughs> anyway. A huge shout out to all of my patrons out there. Really do appreciate all your support a lot. 
hope to see you soon in one of my other videos and yeah until then bye bye